Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another fabulous um, educational and engaging program from the Museum of the Southern Jewish Experience here in New Orleans. Tonight, we are going to be hearing, uh, we're going to be uh, talking with Dr. Stephen Bowman about a fascinating uh, piece of Civil War history, a piece of Jewish history, a piece of Jewish Civil War history. Uh, we've got a wonderful um, uh, bunch of participants from all over the country, and uh, we're going to talk with Stephen, and then if people have some questions, uh, I'll be able to read out a few at the, toward the end of, um, of our conversation. So uh, please uh, join me in uh, wherever you are in your homes or wherever in welcoming uh, to the museum Dr. Stephen Bowman, uh, the uh, editor of the Civil War novel, Differences. Very nice to have you here, Stephen. Thank you so much for agreeing to participate with us and share this really interesting story um, with our museum family. Pleasure. Now you get to say, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Well, great. Well, Stephen, I want to start out by letting you tell us a little bit about yourself, about uh, your background, the, the, the things that you studied and that you've researched and written about in your career. Uh, well, I was born in Boston uh, during the uh, another war. <clears throat> and uh, studied in Boston Latin school and then went on to university. And then after I graduated from uh, from the university, I went to uh, Israel and studied at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem for two years. And then came back to uh, uh, study with my teacher, uh, who was invited to Ohio State University, where I wound up finishing my degree on the Jews in Byzantium in the uh, Paleologue period, that is from 1204 to 1453. And uh, during that time, I spent, uh, after the two years I spent in Israel, I later, uh, after I did my generals, I got uh, two fellowships uh, to uh, do research and study at the uh, American School of Classical Studies in Athens, which I figured I needed to learn some Greek geography as well as uh, delve through the uh, tremendous uh, archives that they had available uh, from the war period. And there I was introduced to a couple of survivors, uh, not survivors, uh, but um, people who were in the resistance during the war. And that piqued my interest. And one of the persons that I talked to, in fact, <clears throat> was the first person to write in English uh, on the Jews who participated in the uh, in the um, in the resistance during the war. And he, in fact, published uh, a lecture, which was a seminal lecture in 1982, I believe. Uh, and his nephew. Um, his nephew uh, later wrote his book uh, in which he castigated the United States. Uh, for not having done much, um, and the British for not having done anything really uh, to help the Greek Jews uh, by warning them. And this wasn't until 1943 that there would be that the, the deportation started. And he found enough documents. Uh, he and his father were historians, self-made historians, and they collected a lot of material. And he put it together in a book called uh, the book uh, uh, which he published. Uh, which um, I'll get to a little bit later. But in any event, I uh, came back to the United States, uh, did a little bit of teaching in Indiana, uh, and then uh, eventually wound up in California, and then eventually wound up uh, at the University of Cincinnati, uh, where I taught uh, until I retired in 2015. Uh, so the uh, my interest then, <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, was writing a little bit, um, a few articles 
of what I found in Greece, namely the uh, some uh, 16th, 17th century gravestones. And I wrote those up. And they hadn't been published before. Some of them had been, but <clears throat> not really studied. Uh, and then uh, uh, when I came back, I started to work on my dissertation again and eventually published that, uh, The Jews in Byzantium. Uh, and then and, and, uh, while <clears throat> wandering through the, uh, the archives and the literature, I came across uh, uh, the book of Yosipon, uh, Sefer Yosipon, if uh, any of you know it. And it was written by a 10th century Jew in southern Italy and was his uh, reinterpretation of Josephus for his generation. And what he was answering was a uh, Christian, maybe a Jew who converted to Christianity, but he was an anti, uh, anti-Jew. And he wrote uh, a book on the destruction of Jerusalem, which became the theme of his particular uh, rewriting of Josephus. Uh, and this, uh, the author of, of, of the Sefer Yosipan, uh, literally re-Judaized uh, Josephus in Hebrew for his contemporary Jews. And for the past millennium, the past millennium, that is from the 10th century to the 20th, uh, it was the most popular uh, uh, book on Jewish history of the Second Temple period before the, uh, uh, the Wissenschaft people began to uh, do their research and uh, uh, put together their reinterpretations of everything. And it turns out they, they, they literally found out the same things that he had already written. Wow. So he was right on target in the way that he read manuscripts and interpreted the uh, the sources, comparing them. And so it's, it's really uh, what um, David Flusser, who was the, 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 one of the major uh, Dead Sea scholars, uh, as well as medieval scholars uh, at the Hebrew University, called perhaps the first true mis- the true historian um, uh, of the medieval period. That is one that we would define as an historian according to our own uh, criterion of today. So now, <clears throat> how do you jump from uh, Byzantine Jews to uh, the Civil War? Tell us, tell us how you came about, how you discovered this early novel written by a, Jew, a Jewish Civil War surgeon. Well, it, it starts out when I started um, publishing uh, memoirs of Greek Jews uh, during the war. I published, I think, about six of them. <clears throat> uh, some of them were in the, in the resistance, some of them were in, uh, uh, in the camps. And so I collected the material, I interviewed a number of them, uh, and I got my manuscript, their manuscript, and then, what are you going to do with the manuscript? You have to get it published. So I started wandering around New York looking for a publisher. And Ray Dalvin, who was who was one of the, the major uh, students of, of Yanina Jews, uh, did the same thing when, when she had translated uh, a Jewish author, a poet, rather, uh, of, the, uh, of the 30s and 40s. And she wandered all over New York looking for someone to help her publish the book, but she couldn't get any money from them. But eventually she got it published in any event. So I was wandering through the uh, 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 the East Side and I came across um, Block Publishing Company. And I had several Block Publishing books in my, uh, in my library. And so I went up and met Charles Block, who was the fifth, fifth generation, I believe, of the... Um, of the first block uh, who started the American Israelite, which is still the longest running Jewish newspaper in this country. And uh, Block was in Cincinnati in the 1850s. And Isaac Mayer Weiss came from New York to Cincinnati, uh, where he was invited uh, in order to uh, coalesce the uh, emerging uh, reform movement, which he effectively established out there, as well as uh, throughout the uh, throughout the Midwest. 
So uh, I said to Charles, you know, I've got this, these manuscripts and I need a, a publisher. Would you be interested? He said, sure. <laughs> right. So um, I started publishing them. Then one day, uh, you know, over lunch, um, he told me about this interesting book, uh, Differences, right. uh, written by Nathan Mayer, who turned out to be a uh, physician uh, who started in Cincinnati and then spent the next, uh, after the Civil War, spent the next 45 years uh, in Hartford, Connecticut, making a grand reputation for himself as a literary figure, uh, as a uh, uh, critic of music, uh, of uh, uh, contemporary events uh, in Germany in the late uh, 19th century. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that uh, he eventually wrote uh, about five novels, Nathan. So well, tell said, us so, about tell us about how tell us about his yeah, well, civil war experiences. Getting there. Yeah. So 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 he tells me that that, that um, you know Nathan wrote uh, this book called Differences, which he liked very much, and one of his his, his customers uh, suggested to him that um, there was an awful lot of contact uh, between that book and Gone with the Wind of Margaret Mitchell. So that really piqued my interest. So why not start another project? So eventually I found a copy of it. I really searched for it. I couldn't find it in any of the libraries. Um, although it, it had been published serially uh, in the American Israelite in the early 1850s. Uh, found a copy of it, um, a Xerox copy in Yale University Library. So I ordered it. And being a, a uh, uh, having an academic position, I was able to copy it on their Xerox machine. Uh, and then I read it. I'm a huge novel. In this particular uh, edition, it was about uh, 500 pages. Uh, and then since uh, I had a, uh, a partner in a, in a uh, uh, publishing company, that we had started in order to publish these uh, these books. Um, she typed it up and prepared the manuscript. And we never got to uh, uh, publish it with Charles Block, who unfortunately um, uh, uh, died still young. Oh. And he left the uh, he left the business to his son, uh, who was living in Florida, uh, retired from the police force. Um, uh, having been wounded, uh, and uh, you know, in the course of action, mm -hmm. and uh, so he continued the publication uh, of the uh, of the next few books that we we published. So, uh, so here is the um, the book. Right, and this is the book. Uh, hold it up a little bit more so that oh, we can we see go. it. Right. So this is so this book is in the public domain because it's so it's, old, it's right? It's now in the public domain. And you uh, can, if 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 people go onto Amazon, they will see sort of different editions. There are, there are, I think there are there are three there are three uh, editions. Two of them are two of them were, were done by the uh, by the Indians who loved to pirate books, you know, nineteenth century books that are out of copyright, and so they published this so with this one as well. But it's it was it's unedited right. because there were a lot of mistakes in it, Print, nice. printing mistakes, etc. So uh, we edited it and made it made it you know look nice. So in, I, in 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 deciding to you read the book, you decided that you would like to edit it. Um, you, did you do research on Nathan Meyer and his life and oh his yeah, experiences I've got a, I've got during a, the Civil War? I've got, a, I've got a file about this thick on, on Nathan. Well, Not tell only, us a little bit about his experiences during the Civil War. I think I think the audience would appreciate that. All right. Well, Nathan was was he he came to uh, to America with his father with his father who was a rabbi, and the the rest of the family from from Bavaria, uh, shortly uh, after the uh, eighteen forty eight revolution, uh, when a number of uh, intelligent people got out of out of that mess, uh, and he came to Cincinnati where he functioned as a rabbi for a while before moving to uh, Hartford <clears throat> where he ended his career uh, uh, after after um, after a distinguished career 
uh, and Nathan took it up later. Now, what Nathan did with it, you came at 10, very precocious kid, uh, fluent in German, of course, fluent in Hebrew, at 10. Um, and uh, he eventually learned, learned French. Uh, and uh, he was he was quite a uh, quite an intelligent fellow, and uh, quite well trained, and read a lot, and he played wonderful music, and he sang beautifully. So in fact, he was an all around uh, person that you'd love to have at uh, any of your house parties, more or less. So after a few years, when he when he got to uh, into his teens, and he'd been publishing novels, eventually published five novels, uh, Jewish historical novels on Prague, uh, the Golem of Prague. So this was after the Civil War that he writes no, these novels? No, before, it's before, before the Civil War. Before yeah, the Civil War, and he's, and he's already a doctor? This is his teenager. He, he's, he's, been writing, he's been writing books and poems. He translated, he translated um, uh, a number of Hebrew poems uh, so that... Gotcha. Um, um, uh, Weiss, who was uh, Rabbi Weiss, who was creating a a, uh, a literary stable, mm -hmm. because the reformed Jews out there had nothing to read, nothing Jewish, mm -hmm. so he decided to create. So, <clears throat> um, so Block, who who um, founded the uh, the American Israelite, then became the publisher of many of uh, of Weiss's stable. So Nathan, um, Nathan was writing novels, and they were serialized in the early uh, American Israelite during the 1850s. Then uh, uh, he decided that uh, you know he wanted to, to be a, a doctor. Why not? So he went to uh, the Cincinnati. Cincinnati had two medical schools. And in 1859, he graduated from the uh, Cincinnati Medical College. And then uh, uh, he took a uh, uh, an educational postgraduate tour of, of, of Europe. And he studied in Paris, uh, in Germany, uh, and uh, I believe also in Italy, which was very valuable because he learned many things that he was able to use uh, when he uh, was in the Civil War. He came back in uh, 1862, and immediately uh, his father was already a rabbi in in, uh, in uh, Hartford with the rest of the family, and uh, he immediately offered his services to the governor of uh, Connecticut, and he was uh, given a commission, and he was a commission as an assistant surgeon in the Connecticut 11th Regiment. Uh, then after his um, his immediately um, recognition of his of his uh, talents, uh, he became the the uh, major surgeon of the 16th Connecticut, and there he served uh, he served in the uh, uh, in the Union Army, uh, and he records much of this experience in differences <laughs> with extremely <clears throat> excuse me. extremely um, uh, detailed descriptions of battles and of uh, uh, medical life uh, and uh, actions in uh, during the Civil War, and particularly uh, the Battle of Antietam, where he set up a, uh, a hospital in one of the uh, farm, farmhouses um, just behind the battlefield. So in effect, uh, he tells many, many very exciting stories uh, because he was a raconteur uh, of uh, first quality and an author, extremely uh, skilled author uh, and talented author um, who uh, traveled through uh, Tennessee and through Alabama, uh, at least with Sherman, uh, Sherman's army. And eventually all of these elements both of the battles that he uh, witnessed and that he uh, treated the uh, soldiers with um, uh, as part of the uh, integral part 
uh, of his book. Extremely interesting read uh, as such. And uh, uh, even had a fight with the, uh, uh, the, the major general uh, of the army <laughs> uh, by um, uh, suggesting uh, a way in which they could serve uh, uh, the uh, yellow fever that uh, uh, was decimating the troops. <clears throat> and he'd found uh, a British uh, doctor uh, who had uh, attempted successfully uh, and uh, he proposed that the uh, that the doctors begin to use that. And the major general refused. He says, we don't do things like that. But he did it for his own men, <clears throat> and it worked out quite well. well what what so, did he, I mean, if the mosquito carries the yellow fever, so he, yeah. did he, he screened or he, he. No, it was on the screen, the screening was, was, was another thing. I didn't think they learned that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't even but um, uh, but uh, there's some kind of concoction uh, that they uh, that they put together, uh, and wow. uh, as, as general generally found out that the one of the most helpful things for the for the wounded soldiers was a um, a shot of whiskey, and they appreciated it, and it seemed to help them as well. So in effect, he was quite successful <clears throat> uh, in, in treating, and also in teaching uh, uh, many of the uh, Soldiers who helped him, who were assigned to him, uh, he made he made very uh, competent nurses out of them, and uh, proceeds to explain how they moved and, and how they uh, did various things uh, huh. to, uh, to help the uh, to help the, uh, the people. Now you said his father was a rabbi. What kind? I mean, I'm going to ask a kind of a, a general question. What kind of a Jew? Was Nathan Meyer? Was he was he practicing? Was he observant? Holidays, kashrut, that sort of thing. He doesn't talk about religion at all. Oh, okay. So he's a Jewish doctor, but it's he's not a Jew, the story he was, he, he, of a Jewish, he's a Jewish doctor. doctor who hangs around with 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 uh, with Jews in in Tennessee and in uh, uh, New York, so that he can compare the. Uh, yeah, my apologies to uh, to New York. They love to blow their horn. The um, uh, the Jews in in New York were mainly uh, 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 German Jews. That Stephen Birmingham wrote about. Uh, he didn't like them either, but Nathan Nathan had had uh, a satirical look at them because their their, uh, their their world was not not a Jewish world. It was a money world. Okay. So uh, he compared them all the time to these uh, dignified, uh, to these dignified southern, uh, southern Jews that he met, uh, who were mainly Sephardic in 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 the uh, in that sense, uh, as well as uh, the French uh, uh, plantation family uh, that he eventually. Uh, filled up the uh, much of his novel with the love story uh, between these two, uh, he and, and the uh, the daughter of the uh, uh, was French, uh, uh, French family, and the uh, grandmother of the French family, of course, continually spoke about uh, her experiences with Napoleon I. And that, in fact, uh, would bring in another another form of studying 19th, early 18th, 19th century. Um, but you, you've said that this is, that differences was one of the first, I mean, it was, it came it out was, very soon after much, the Civil War. It was pretty much the first Jewish novel, because there weren't right. any Jewish novels before it, to speak of. So first and, Jewish novel and one of the first Civil War novels. One of the first uh, post-Civil War novels, it was published in 1867. So he right. was he was immobilized in in 1865, and he spent 1866 uh, putting this massive piece together. And how was it received? <laughs> how was it received? Was it was it received? Was it widely well, read? We, we it... don't really have that much information on its reception. Uh, it just became you know one of the one of the the many uh, Jewish novels that were being produced in the late 19th century. 
but none could match it whatsoever. And none of them are still read. His is most readable. And um, it's been judged as, as the finest, uh, the finest um, uh, novel, pre-1900 uh, novel uh, written by a Jew from that perspective. So, well, they, now, so, 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 take us through the rest of the biography before we get into some of the uh, some of the, um, the, the Gone with the Wind stuff. You know, yeah. so what so, happens so, to the rest of his life? Yeah. So, uh, so Nathan, um, Nathan, and the uh, after his demobilization, I, I think he wrote it in in uh, <clears throat> uh, in Connecticut uh, in Hartford. Uh, and then sent it um, uh, piecemeal to uh, uh, to Block in, in Cincinnati, uh, who published it in the American Israelite. And it, as he did much of the literature that was produced by Weiser's uh, stable. Right. And uh, with his experience, first of all, as a, as a, uh, as a serious MD and surgeon, uh, as opposed to uh, what uh, he considered, you know, many of his contemporary doctors uh, who were just happy to put an MD uh, and, and sell uh, uh, mineral oils because uh, he didn't have he didn't have too much respect for them. But the, he had he had a number of number of colleagues. He was part of the the medical society and, a, and an excellent after dinner speaker and much beloved uh, by the children. He never married. So he, in fact, adopted all the children in in, uh, uh, in Hartford. He would uh, go around uh, at, at uh, Christmas time uh, delivering gifts and candies to all the sick kids as well. And he made quite a reputation for himself. He also, uh, uh, given the fact that he was uh, uh, extremely interested in music, not too well, uh, uh, too good a um, uh, musician, but he understood music, and of course, um, he listened to all of the top, the top people in in, in Paris and and uh, in Germany and in Italy when he was over there uh, for a couple of the, for the three years that he was there. Uh, and so he wrote for the Hartford uh, for the Hartford Times uh, for I think about forty years, both in terms of reviewing books, reviewing uh, contemporary. Uh, European politics, particularly Germany, since he uh, 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 was fluent in German, and uh, uh, and critiqued uh, uh, music uh, as well, and was extremely uh, uh, respected by the veterans of the 16th uh, uh, Infantry, and uh, periodically wrote poems for them. Uh, did, he, of, did he remain a doctor throughout his uh, right his all life? Till, till till 1912 when he died? He so he was a doctor. He spent his time being a doctor. He all, and then he spent his free time, I guess, writing, writing criticism, writing poems, writing. He wrote more novels after differences. Uh, he wrote a total of five novels. I didn't get the dates of of all of them. Are any of the others in in print or known? I think there were copies of of of, uh, of, of, of them in um, uh, in the in the lib in the Library of Congress, the Congress Library, uh, yeah. but they were all they were all in the Israelite. They were all serialized. All okay. serialized in the in the Israelite. Uh, I gotcha. Being the best way to if you're not going to. Do you really know if Doctor them. Do you know if Doctor Mayer was uh, one of the founders of St. Francis Hospital um, in Hartford? It's a Catholic hospital that's still there. I'm asking because somebody in the chat has asked that. Oh, that um, that I don't know because I I never followed his father's career. Okay. Uh, and in fact, the, the the few things I read about his father uh, didn't. Uh... Well, not his father. I mean, I think they're they're asking if he did, if Nathan. Oh. Since he was in Connecticut, spent so much time in, in Hartford. Connecticut. Is he in Hartford? Yeah. No, I, I I didn't see that in his in his in his bio. Okay. At all. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I mean, clearly, um, uh, his reputation as a as a surgeon, since he taught all of the European stuff that he had learned. Sure. 
uh, he freely dispensed that to uh, to train younger doctors. So I, I have uh, no doubt that he was uh, affiliated with them in some way. Well, and we have some questions about his um, his views or if he expressed his views on anti-Semitism in the army. Did he encounter it? Um, no, no, he doesn't mention it at all. Does he? Was, okay. he was he was treated as as the little doctor, affectionately, affectionately. Was he, he short in stature? A very short. Okay. <laughs> he tells us so. He got he got a horse, of course, to ride. Because he was a, you know, <clears throat> and um, one of his, uh, one of one of his, uh, one of the officers borrowed his horse, but he was a six foot, uh, you know, four, so mm -hmm. he, you know, had a length in the stirrups. So he gave him back the horse, but the stirrups elongated. So he got on the horse, and the horse bolted, and ran through the camp, ran through the general's tent, and. Uh, and he just kept riding it all 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 day until Fine. he tamed it. <laughs> well, that must have been difficult because I know that surgery at that time took some physical strength, you know, especially doing things like amputations. So being short must have been something of a hindrance for him. Not really. Uh, 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 he was in good shape. Okay. Uh, and he he was he was in good health. And um, he did have he did have uh, you know, a number of of aides uh, that were assigned to him, you know, mm -hmm. to help carry the bodies and such, and and to treat the uh, and to treat his patients um, in the tents. So in effect, uh, he might have been considered uh, you know sort of like the head doctor uh, rather than rather than one of the uh, surgeons out there in the in the field. I remember gotcha. when when I visited. Uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, the Civil War battlefields, they you know they put out a little show, and uh, of course they turned it into a joke. And then the, 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 some days they said this is the hospital tent, and uh, they kept throwing throwing these these plastic uh, limbs out the out the out the window. So apparently, you know the idea that that, that uh, the best way to handle things was to uh, was to cut it off, you know, amputate. Well, that bring, that that brings me to mind because I remember as a child watching uh, Gone with the Wind for the first time, and it's still horrifying is that horrifying scene of the surgeon removing a, a man's leg as he's begging them not to. Um, so let's let's uh, turn the the discussion toward your contention or or, or your your thought that Margaret Mitchell was greatly influenced by this by this novel. Well, the the point is, uh, Margaret Mitchell. I saw a a, a, um, a documentary on her, and uh, this is after I I, uh, I I read Gone with the Wind. Finally, <clears throat> um, I saw the movie a couple of times, but uh, uh, and uh, you know was kind of kind of annoyed at the <clears throat> at the uh, the sexual. Uh, aspect of uh, of that, and then I said to myself, "What's going on here?" And it turns out that that uh, that this, in effect, was was partly semi uh, semi biographical of, of 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 the author. And in any event, that's uh, that's neither here nor there because when I when I wrote up this this piece of Gone with the Wind, I said um, uh, it. it um, it doesn't um, it doesn't reflect, if you will, the sexual um, uh, horrors, <clears throat> if you will, that she underwent uh, um, with her drunken husband, um, okay. and um, and also the, the, her treatment of of um, of the uh, of the contemporary blacks uh, during the uh, uh, the period. So Nathan Nathan was uh, was uh, an abolitionist, or he had abolitionist feelings. Uh, maybe he kept them to himself, maybe not. But in any event, uh, didn't make him too too welcome, if you will, in the uh, in the society, uh, the upper society of, of the the Tennessee uh, people that he uh, that he knew and hung around with uh, before the war or during the war. 
as such. And in fact, um, uh, eventually he had to escape from the South uh, since he really, uh, especially after, uh, 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 towards the end of the war, uh, he had to escape from, from uh, uh, he was chased down literally uh, you know, up north. Uh, and he took along with him a uh, uh, slave uh, who became his servant, whom he uh, freed uh, and kept him uh, as a faithful servant um, uh, for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the book. So he had no problems with with uh, you know any racial animosity towards the. Wait, are you? I'm the, sorry, I, I'm confused. Are you talking about? Nathan, or are you talking about the character in the book? Oh, the character, the character in the book. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Which might gotcha. have re might have reflected reality, because uh, the gotcha. the the uh, is uh, because uh, there's treatment, very treatment. little there's very little to no evidence um, of Southern Jewish abolitionism. I mean, it just. I mean, in maybe no, in no, no, no. There was, there was, a, there was a, a, Jew, a Jewish judge, a Jewish judge who really, um, uh, you know, condemned the slavery. I think it was in the early, uh, the, the, I think it was in the eighteen fifties. Uh, this is uh, some, some of his, some of his material is in, in the, uh, the book on, on documents of, of Jewish history. Uh, but I'd, I think I'd be interested changed. to learn more about that. I know there was a, a fellow, a Jewish man from. Um, Florida, but he was already living in England when when he wrote a the kind of a thesis on on abolition. Um, but his but even even his ideas were pretty rife with um, you know with some with racist uh, uh, thoughts from the time. So yeah. um, we're always looking for those examples of Southern Jewish abolitionists. Well, yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't, to, I wouldn't like, necessarily call, you know, look for them as abolitionists. Uh, I haven't, I hadn't found any. There might be, but I, I hadn't found any. But I know they were, they were sympathetic to the blacks. They would not like the, uh, you know, the white Protestants who were, who were uh, either, either, you know, nice, nice guys like like Warren Buffett, or really vicious people like, uh, you know, like the ones that uh, <clears throat> that uh, you see in the movies. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, southern Southern Jews did um, benefit from the the racial hierarchy of the South. I mean, that's that's there's no question. There's no discussion or or debate about that. I mean, Southern Jews owned enslaved people at, at about the same percentage as non-Jewish white Southerners. Yeah, um, but they were they were different. The the uh, the ones in Tennessee, I don't think they didn't, they didn't grow cotton in Tennessee. Yeah, you didn't have to grow cotton. No, but I, that, 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 this is this is basically where the uh, uh, where the real mean guys were. Uh, in effect, uh, you know, the Virginia blacks and the Virginia whites who were raising blacks and selling them down uh, to the uh, to the swamps of of Alabama and Mississippi uh, really um, you know, you turned their life into into hell, as such, yeah. which is what the the main the main stories that are coming out of the main movies that are coming out uh, yeah. of, the, uh, of the period. Sure. Well, let's, well, tell me about this. Tell me about the, the, the similarities between differences and gone with the wind. I mean, where, ah. where do you see, what, what are the similarities? Well, it starts out um, that uh, Wayland's uh, uh, father, Wayland is, 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 is this, this, <clears throat> the, um, um, Fake biography of of uh, of, uh, of Nathan himself. Uh, his father, his father had to leave Bavaria, and so uh, Wayland, uh, who had, had been part of the uh, the military, uh, was given a consignment of captured gold that uh, he claims was stolen from him, and not till the uh, book is 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 well underway do we find out who stole it and uh how he uh he's forced to confess uh and then is executed the one who stole it so that uh that that restored his his reputation which had been soured by the fact that that, that, that there was a scandal um <clears throat> of his background 
So in effect, um, uh, both uh, um, uh, Gone with the Wind and Differences have the fathers of the uh, her, 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 her father uh, was Irish and had to leave under a cloud and, uh, and Nathan's father had to leave under a cloud. Uh, wait, who's uh, you mean Scarlet's father? Yeah, the, the yeah. Irish family had to. Okay. So, yeah, so he, he left under scandalous uh, uh, effect. Gotcha. A lot of people, a lot of people went to America under those circumstances. But in any event, uh, so that's 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 one way. And then particular characters, uh, I list I list the. the, the uh, uh, in the, in, the, in just a you know a small small uh, uh, short listing, just to uh, uh, show a number of of, of uh, parallels, uh, similarities, if you will, because I I didn't go out to prove anything, uh, but just to uh, to make a case uh, for someone to uh, to sit down and really do some serious serious work. Now Margaret, um, uh, who was uh, if you remember, was rather a strange woman. Had a strange experience, and thought to, when she was younger, uh, she spent a um, a year, I think, at Smith College, reading probably every uh, post Civil War novel that she could get her hands on, and I suspect either either in in, in Smith uh, or in Northampton or in Atlanta, she had access to a copy uh, and read it, uh, and 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 it just. The um, there, there seemed to be a you know a, a a common atmosphere that permeates both books, and so I suggested that that this might be the grandfather of uh, of Gone with the Wind, and hopefully somebody will pick up that stuff because <clears throat> I was I was busy translating the book of Yosipan and uh, and writing articles on on Byzantine Jewry and articles on. Uh, uh, World War II in Greece. So I really didn't have the time and I built up a small file of of, of material uh on Nathan and his uh, uh and his other works. Um uh, not enough to write about, but uh enough to show me that uh that there's well worth of, of uh, a biography of his. And in the book, uh, not only um his novel but um, I found his his uh, memoir uh, of the war period that he wrote, and I found the manuscript of that, uh, which had already been partially published, uh, and then published the whole thing. Uh, and also, uh, he added to it uh, the poem that he gave for the dedication of the uh, 16th Infantry Monument at Antietam. Uh, which is a you know very moving uh, literate uh, poem because he had an absolute control of the English language, the American language, I should say, as such. Okay. Um, what what did you like best about this this journey you took of uh, discovering this uh, this novel, uh, editing it? writing an et, you know writing an intro and 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 an appendix about the connections um you know to other things what was your favorite part well it was an interesting interlude that uh, that I did uh, uh periodically um mostly uh you know mostly when I was in the uh, in the states I think when I was teaching in Indiana um I think that's when I did most of most of the research yeah, and then when I went to Cincinnati, I, I continued it because uh, uh, I had a better library available, and I was closer to uh, Hartford, uh, where I went on a research trip, and they have uh, they, they had medical society, uh, little museum, which was a lot of fun, and very very kind people uh, that uh, uh, helped me with with uh, some documents uh, as such, and. Uh, it was just uh, absolutely delightful wandering through, seeing the collection of, of uh, instruments that they had, 
and the uh, uh, apparently uh, uh, Hartford was well known uh, for the quality of its doctors at the time. Um, I even found Nathan's will, uh, which showed that he gave away most of his his uh, uh, his uh, property uh, and his uh, his money. Uh, he was he was just really a a jolly old fellow. Did he? Did he have a? Did you find out? Did he have a family? Did he have a wife? No, children? no, no. He had he had no family. Uh, he had no he had family. brothers. He had brothers and and and, uh, and nephews and, and nieces and things of that nature, but uh, uh, he himself was uh, uh, alone amongst his uh, uh, writing, uh, his friends, his colleagues, his patients. Uh, he had a full life. Well, and you said he died in 1912, so that would have made him how old? Let's see. He was 10 in, in, in uh, he came in 1930, 1838, I think it was. No, 1848. They left. I think he was born around 1838. So that would make him uh, 70, 60, 70, 70, uh, in his early 70s. Okay. And where is he? Do you know where he's buried? Yeah, I guess it's, it's, uh, he's, he's buried in Hartford. In Hartford. Yeah, have with, you, with, have with, you with, been? Have you, have I, you I have. I, 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 I never. I never made it to his. Uh, I never made it to the graveyard. Uh, okay. Well, you're in New York right now. You could. Uh, you could go tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I. <laughs> I I've got. Uh, I've got another big project that I'm. That's a lot of things on. going on. Yeah. I yeah. I, I, I'm spending most of my time in the library for that. Uh, but also, I, I, I should mention, um, following in his footsteps, <clears throat> that uh, there were a number of, of Greek doctors during uh, World War II, Greek Jewish doctors, uh, who were um, you know, highly respected, uh, one of whom uh, uh, received the uh, 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 Dutch citizenship for his work in Bergen-Belsen. Uh, and also from the Greek government, uh, since uh, he had learned something uh, very exciting about frostbite from a French physician when he was uh, taking classes in in, uh, in France. And so he was able to save legs and arms, hands. Uh, and so, and uh, also, uh, uh, he was a uh, um, really, a, you know, a major, a major uh, doctor in the western part of Greece uh, during the war in Epirus. Such. Uh, Nils, uh, Nils is asking where he can get a copy of the poem. I think he's referring to the poem that he wrote for the veterans of the um, of the Connecticut seventeen. Yeah, well, I I, I, <clears throat> I published I published what in the book. Oh, it's in the book. Okay, uh, so Neil, you can you also, go to he can Amazon. Also, he, can, he can also spend uh, twenty-five or thirty dollars, like I did, uh, to buy, you know, one of those pirated copies uh, that um, that. Uh, no, we're not going to do Indian that. Knows. We're going to we're we're going to go to Amazon, or we're going to buy your your copy. We're going to buy. <laughs> <laughs> we're well, we're going to go buy differences. I have I have a final question, which is why was the book called Differences? Why oh. was that the title of the book? Because he anticipated the whole literary movement of of, of differences uh, that that's been going on in, in, in the twentieth century, uh, I mean it was it's very up now with this, right? uh, as uh, as as um, uh, my spouse tells me, because uh, I mean she knows literature, um, uh, she taught literature for for, for for forty years, and so she knew all of the different schools of literature that were going on. And she was very excited when I gave her the title the first time we 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 you know I showed it to her. She said, that is something. She said that's way at the beginning, if not at the beginning. So what what were the was he talking about the differences he's between comparing, North and he's South? Comparing, he's comparing northern Jews uh, to the to the southern Jews. Um, he's comparing uh, uh, northerners that he knew from, from growing up in Cincinnati uh, to. Um, uh, to the southern, to the to the to the uh, southerners um, that are there, uh, he's he's making these kinds of comparisons, the same kinds of comparisons that, that show up in Margaret Mitchell's uh, book. 
Well, in Margaret Mitchell's book, of course, the South, the Southerners are, uh, you know, like the good guys, and yeah, the Northerners yeah. are the bad guys. Absolutely. Um, but but here is somebody from. Uh, He's Cincinnati. doing that to the Jews. Yeah, Jewish. The uh, Southern man. Southern Jews are much more elegant because they have uh, they have European uh, uh, manners. And, well, uh, and they and, and the, um, uh, the the woman of the of the uh, uh, of the Tennessee uh, plantation, the, the grandmother, uh, and and her daughter, um, they really uh, you know say the the the, uh, the Americans don't have that uh, same kind of uh, birth context. Uh, that well, that, and that's the thing them, about the South. That's the thing about the South is that the South has has the 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 myth or the the desire to be genteel and to be more European, the Scotch Irish, the kind of that that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, they sort of um, they sort of cultivated that. And then the the Jews in the South, wanting to fit in, wanting to be Southerners, um, you know, adopt. A lot of those southern mannerisms for 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 yeah, good well they had they had the, the the Sephardim had had their their memories going back to uh, uh to the, the, the you know to the Middle Ages. Well, sure. Well, yeah. all, and many of the... many of many of them had been uh, uh, quite successful, quite successful in in, in France and Germany. Absolutely, uh, and they carried that with them. Absolutely, but they didn't. But they didn't have the same kind of of. Uh, 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 family worship uh, that the upper classes in in uh, in Europe had, and that's that's the, that's one of the major differences that that um, uh, that comes out in the in the reminiscences uh, uh -huh. of the of, the, uh, of these people. Well, very interesting. Well, this would make if anyone on the program here participating is in a book club, um, this might be a really interesting book for your book club to read and discuss. It's got history, it's got culture. Um, I think uh, I think this might be a, a really fascinating read and it is, you can get it on Amazon, you could probably get it other places online. Um, and Stephen, I wanna thank you for taking time to, um, to share your experiences editing this book um, and, um, and I learned a lot and I look forward. I, you've sent me you sent me a digital copy and I've and I've started it. I have to admit I haven't finished it. But uh I look forward now really to finishing it and then probably I'll read Gone with the Wind because I've never read that. I've only seen the movie. Yeah, yeah that's the problem. I, I went, I went It'll probably to, take as long to read to watch the movie as to read it. It's a long movie. Yeah, um, I mean, it feels, you'll skip through Gone with the Wind. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, but anyway, once once you read differences, um, uh, a lot of things will, will ring a bell when you when you uh, when you read Gone with the Wind. They did to me. That's why I, I picked out a, you know, I picked out I picked out some of the uh, the parallels, uh, if you will, uh, of uh, of uh, if I if you if you have a minute, I could just give you some of them. Um, sure. Which, which, which I had I had here. Where is it? Oh, they have it parallels. Uh, let's see. So um, it starts out uh, motifs, the differences motifs. Uh, Mayer ends his novel with United in Love, he said, notwithstanding former differences. Mitchell, for her part, rejoins with, as I told you before, there is one unforgivable sin in any society, be different and be damned. So she had her own, she had her own problems with this, but uh, but uh, uh, <clears throat> um, several of of, of Mayer's uh, motifs uh, compares to uh, Mitchell's uh, Scarlett O'Hara. Uh, she too was a newcomer whose father Gerald won his plantation uh, in, in Clayton, Georgia, in a poker game, awesome. and so uh, so that's how Nathan starts off his book. How he right. makes a, a friend who's his friend through the whole through the whole book right. by uh, uh, by catching the um, uh, a cheat who was who had already taken this guy's fortune 
uh, and he uh, exposed him. So they became intimate friends, and he too was a uh, was a Tennessee uh, uh, landowner. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And let's see. Uh, and uh, so Gerald O'Hara and and uh, Louis Wayland both left Europe under 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 different kind of clouds. Okay. And uh, a scarlet was was torn between two men, as was Antonia, the one that that that, uh, uh, that eventually marries the hero, uh, between uh, uh, Turtelot, uh, to whom we can bear with with Ashley, and uh, right. Gone with the Wind, and Wayland uh, compares uh, to to Red Butler, but he's not vicious like like Red Butler is. Uh, uh, and even differences between the respective males resonate some similarity when taken in the aggregate. While Scarlet seems built as an opposite to to uh, uh, to Wayland, both heroes incidentally reflect autobiographical experiences of the respective authors. However, the passion of both Scarlet and Rhett are totally lacking from Mayer's more serene and romantic novel. Gotcha. Well, there's definitely, there's definitely, I, I'm fascinated to, to read, read through this and, um, and look at those similarities. Again, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank all the participants for taking their time to be with us this evening um, here at the Museum of the Southern Jewish Experience. Um, our greatest hope is that you'll come and visit us in New Orleans, but if you can't visit us, then participating in programs like this um, is a great thing. Um, we have we have a wonderful newsletter. If you're not already receiving the Southern Schmooze every month, you should go on our website and sign up for it. Of course, we would love you to become a member of the museum and really be a, a part of the MSJE family. So um, with that, um, we'll sign off and I hope to see you uh, soon, either in person or online in another program. Good night, everybody. Okay. Thanks for showing up, people. <laughs>